ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सेंथिल सर सो आई विल स्टार्ट विद द इंट्रोडक्शन धर्मेंद्र सर इज अ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियर एंड एम बी ए मार्केटिंग बाय एजुकेशन एंड इज प्रोलिफिक कंटेंट क्रिएटर ऑन पर्सनल फाइनेंस he runs a very popular whatsapp community next level sessions comprising nearly 10000 members with whom he shares content on daily basis he is credited with having created one of the most enduring financial education mascot of financial services uh, industry uh, that's professor simply simple he has conducted more than 1000 investor awareness programs and more than 500 training for financial advisors across india dharmendra sir is founder director of next level education private limited a leading training and coaching company for mutual fund distributors and ria dharmendra sir has rich experience and knowledge in personal finance brand building advertising and social media he was marketing head of tata mutual fund for a decade and he has a successful stint in the country's top advertising companies such as lentas o and m fcb he has also served international assignments during the advertising career over to dharmendra sir you can start this <laughs> so thank you very much all of you as i said uh, it's about 410 right now Uh, my session will last for about one hour, and uh, while I would be happy to take another hour of Q and A, but I think this place gets very noisy by five thirty. So, uh, but I'll we'll still I think we should be able to do justice. And I today's session, um, hopefully, the session should be such it should give you clarity. So once you have clarity, then too many questions anyway should not come up. So it's a, if it's a good session, the questions should be less. It should be answered in the presentation itself. so uh, see uh, friends uh, as i said i have a lot of uh, doctor relatives i my father in law is a, uh, was a, is a good doctor is a very uh, popular doctor in bhubaneswar and uh, they have a hospital also there and um, it's since my childhood days i have really been amongst doctors so i have a very good understanding of how a doctor uh, practices and how he how he deals with money particularly and money itself uh, how people deal with money it's the problem is how people everybody has their own money story how they look at money how they look at their careers so i uh, this presentation is your first presentation in the series of presentations and i just want to set the context because i have got a glimpse of your future presentations also so th this presentation is a bit philosophical in nature about uh, money uh, it could have it could well have been the last session also okay but since it's the first session uh, i just would like to tell you that uh, you know unlike medicine you know most of the other professions in even medicine for that matter today i mean there's so much of information available in uh, google and everywhere and uh, while obviously it's not recommended but still uh, there is a lot of information and a doctor today cannot uh, function completely oblivious of the fact that patients have access to a lot of information so the same uh, holds good in most professions so it's uh, we while we can't go deep in any profession but to have some knowledge is very important i mean if you talk about even driving or a, sh a chauffeur i mean i could buy a mercedes car but if i don't know driving uh, see i'm not going to drive the car but it's important that i know what's driving how to drive so some idea we need to have so while the 10 sessions that you are going to do i don't think uh, the 10 sessions will make you an advisor or i wouldn't even recommend that you become your own advisor i mean leave alone being advisor but it's good that you have the knowledge so when you have the knowledge the advantage is that nobody takes you for a ride and uh, in any field where you don't have knowledge there's a possibility that you'll come across somebody or the other who might misguide you M misguiding happens everywhere okay so it happens in our field it happens in your field it happens every year everywhere so as i said my session today is not about teaching you what is equity what is debt you will learn this as i saw the course i would i would only like to say something that learn about it know about it don't immediately jump into it okay because uh, while a lot of people may think what is investing it's like putting money in the bank and forgetting it's not like that if you really want to optimize your money you really want to create good amount of wealth it requires someone to observe you need good people to work with okay who can help you but that doesn't mean you should be oblivious and not have any knowledge 
So let me start my presentation. My presentation is, as I said, slightly philosophical in nature. It could have, it's a good that it's the first session. It could very well have been the last session, but it would not be a good in, in, in between session. It couldn't have been a good third session or a fourth session, either first or the last. So I think good it is first because that will that will really orient your mind towards the future sessions. And uh, knowledge is something, uh, especially money, is a, a very important thing in life because uh, while doctors uh, believe that you know they would like to practice for as long as they live or as long as you can, but uh, I don't think that's the way the world is looking. The world is looking that way nowadays. There are a lot of opportunities of scaling up, of doing other things like what Mr. Kumarish is, Dr. Kumarish is doing right now. So uh, I think if you understand money, you will realize that you can create a lot of money from the money that you have. The money that you have, the money that you keep for, like there's a very famous saying of, uh, um, I'm forgetting the person who wrote uh, Rich Dad, Poor, Robert Kiyosaki. There's a very famous saying that it is not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. So let me start with one very strong, see, I will tell you things that you should hear, not what you wish to hear. At this stage of my life, I don't want accolades. I want to pass on the knowledge. So uh, there's a very famous saying of Robert Kiyosaki. He says that it is not the amount of money you make that matters. It is the money that you keep that matters. So let me give a simple example of a, of a, of a, a doctor scenario, the context of a doctor. I have a, do I have a doctor client. So I was sitting with a doctor client. The doctor client was very happy that she was making nearly seven to eight lakhs rupees a month. I was. I told her simply. I never saw too much of wealth with her. So I told her that I would. I would rather be happier. You make three lakhs rupees a month, and have three crores with you, than earning eight lakhs rupees a month and feeling so happy. I am not happy with your reports. Like you are also not many times happy with the report of the client. So I said I am not happy with your report because while you are certainly making 8 lakhs rupees a month, what is the guarantee that you are going to make 8 lakhs rupees a month forever for the next 25 years? What is the guarantee that you can practice for 25 years? What is the guarantee that there cannot be a disruption in your business? So, so many things can happen in the life of a doctor. So, I would rather be happy with 3 to 4 crores with you and um, you making 3 lakhs rupees a month rather than 8 lakhs rupees a month because the 3 crore generates money by itself. It's like uh, it's like another, uh, maybe like your brother, your sister, or whatever you call that uh, corpus. It is something that is adding money into your account every month. Whether you are practicing or not practicing, you may choose not to practice one day. Who has said that we have to spend our entire life practicing? Okay, so uh, sometimes we take it too seriously that if I am not there, the country won't have doctors, so I have to practice. It's not true. It's very nice to make ourselves feel happy that we are important. The world continues and things happen. Okay, so we have to focus on what is my purpose in life, what I want to do, do I want to do all these things if you want to. And I'll tell you, I, my presentation has these things. So let me start off with my presentation because these things will be explained. So as I said, this is a bit of a philosophical uh, presentation. It will certainly help you. Uh, while I've written the power of money, it is the art of money management or power of money management. It's just as more or less the same thing that I'm going to teach you. Uh, so basically, uh, as I said, let's 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 get going with the presentation. I'll be covering these things that I'm talking about. So you please have a look at this uh, beautiful uh, quotation. It says, "We all die. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. So something you create that will uh, that that will live forever. Or we also say it is uh, in our." Uh, education system that we have next level one of our philosophy is not what you achieve in life what you become in life that matters so when you become something of, a, of, of uh, when you become a person who is very different and who is very evolved it's not about your bank balance like i said three lakhs is also okay okay 10 lakhs and three lakhs doesn't mat matter but the person who's three lakh if he has become something it's far more important than a 10 lakh person who's only achieving so in a way, this is what that slide. This slide is all about. We all die. We all will die one day. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something. So that's creating a legacy. And I think all doctors are very blessed. Okay, which we, which, which I'm trying to be a person who can help people. 
by having the knowledge to uh, share with people, by helping people with the knowledge, just that knowledge alone can improve their quality of life. That knowledge alone can improve their relationships. And doctors are blessed to be selected by God with a degree, okay, which where you can actually help human beings. Okay, so while we sometimes lose that uh, particular aspect, but I think it's a blessing. Very Doctors are the most blessed people because you can help a human being. So creating a legacy, you all, you already have an advantage. But I think some clarity on money management will always help you. Be who you are meant to be. Dance as if no one is watching. Love as if it's all you know. Dream as if you will live forever. Live as if you will die today. So if you if you dream or you educate as if you're never going to die, but you live your life as, as if you'll die today, you'll become a different human being. So many times we are caught up. We are caught up and because we don't have the time to reflect. So my first message to all of us who are here, at least 90%, okay, or even people who are new and who have parents who have some support system, who have parents who are reasonably wealthy. And I'm telling you reasonably wealthy. I'm not talking about extreme wealth. I'm talking about reasonable wealth, reasonable amount of money. All of us actually have enough. Or, or if you're very young, you will have enough very soon. So many times we are chasing something which we need not chase. We have enough. And realization of that, clarity of that will help you take all your decisions. So many of us have enough for our needs. And the science of understanding enough is the art of money management. So you first and foremost need to understand what is enough. Now I'll simply uh, run you through the flow of the presentation. Uh, we have, you You must have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, then comes the main challenges that face our lives. Then understanding why we have enough. Why am I saying that? Then what is the difference between money and wealth? And then money management, a social service. Okay, how is money management a social service? And then what is the path to creating this wealth, which most of you all will want to know. And uh, then finally, the hierarchy of incomes and the legacy, the ultimate wealth. Legacy is ultimate wealth. So uh, before I get going, I just want to ask you one question. Let me see. I'm not getting to see the chat box. One second. Let me just go again. Now it will be. I just would like to ask you all a question on the chat box. This is my favorite question. How much money do you think is enough uh, for you to live a decent quality life, a happy life with all the basic needs, maybe a holidays and um, you know all, all the basic requirements, comforts? How much money is required for the rest of your life? If you have that money today, you can just go and relax. So I am getting one answer, which is four to five crores. Can I have more answers? No, it is not very subjective. Go for it. Life is, everything is subjective. Then we will never participate anywhere. Okay, I'm getting 10 crores. I'm getting 2.2 2 to 3 crores. More, more participation. Very important question. This sets the... Uh, 15 crores, 15 to 20 crores. Any more? There are how many people? There are 42 people. Come on, let's have another five. Around 10 crores, 10 crores. Great. Lovely answers. 10 lakhs? No, that's a mistake. I think you may, you may be meaning 10 crores. Okay, so no fixed amount. So if you see uh, inflation considered, yeah, so our monthly income plus inflation, whatever it is, you give a number. Okay, unless you give a number, you will not realize. And, 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 and I'm not uh, just, this is not philosophy. This is science that I'm talking about. So now if you see the, the answers that we have got, we've got answers like 15 crores. We have got many answers as 10 crores. We have got one or two answers as four to five crores. Now I would want you all to write on the chat box, what does it mean that there is somebody saying 15 crores? There is somebody saying 25 crores? There is somebody saying three crores? First and foremost, what does that reflect? I want you to say. Now, this is something you understand. If the variation is so much, okay, now if you were to ask me that how long does it take 
to do let's say a uh, average surgery okay answers could be 2 hours 3 hours 5 hours 10 hours okay you have somebody might give an answer of 25 hours then you'll know that you're going somewhere else okay so what i'm trying to say is that if this is a variation what is it reflecting can you just now now you now you know that somebody is saying 25 somebody is saying 5 somebody is saying 3 so what does it reflect why is this what does this variation reflect no i mother what i'm trying to get at is the variation is reflecting that there are there are many things so you don't know what you don't know there are many things about which you don't know because we are just putting a number there is no there is no science behind it that is why somebody is saying 3 crores somebody is saying 15 crores and somebody is saying that i cannot answer somebody is saying depends because that clarity is not there okay that is the reason you are going to say and i'll tell you how it can make a difference in your life the person who believes he has to make 20 crores what do you think the person who who's wanting who believes it is 3 crores versus the person who believes it is 20 crores can you imagine the light, the the state of happiness the state of uh, uncertainty in the person and that and how the two people how their lives will be the person who is thinking he has to make 25 crores knows that he has to struggle a lot more he has to work more hours he will he needs to he needs to somehow figure out how to make money he will put money in places which could be very high in risk because somebody is saying you'll get very high returns and that person can go to much can stretch his life a lot more because he thinks he needs 25 crores the person who thinks it is 3 crores will always live a happier life am i right or wrong a person who's going after 3 crores will be a happy, will, will live a more relaxed life or not depends on your age and liabilities no nothing like that that, that is exactly what this clarity you will get that's exactly what the, see the point is now let me come to the point a person in india wherever you are whatever you age you may be okay even if you are 40 years today if you have 3 to 4 crores with you you can live a very decent life till the end of your life okay 3 to 4 crores even if you have 1 crore you can survive and if you have something like 6 to 7 crores you don't need more than that you don't need 15 crores at all you don't need 10 crores you don't need more than six to seven crores to live a very good lifestyle. I think this is the first thing that you need to know in this presentation. Okay, some that's why I said you have people have enough. We just because nobody has defined what the enough is, and this is scientific. So when I say this, I'm assuming that inflation is going to be four to five percent. I'm assuming that returns are going to be close to ten percent, eleven percent. Okay, these are the returns that you talk about, you know. Today, sometimes somebody may come and tell you, you'll get 15%, 20% also. And that also happens. But the example I have given you is 10 to 12% returns, 4 to 5% inflation. Okay, and number of years could be for the next 50 years, 60 years. Okay, and maybe a lifestyle expense of 1.5 lakhs rupees a month. 1 to 1.5 lakhs rupees a month. So if this is the scenario, you are in this range. And if you have 7 to 8 crores, you can live a life of 2.5 crores, 2.5 lakhs rupees a month. That means you can travel abroad two times a year without even hesitation. You can buy a very good car. So we are, don't know that we have enough. So first and foremost, that's the most important message. And now let me continue with my presentation. So here we have uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs that most of you all would have... Uh, come across in your lives, in school. Okay, so the basically hierarchy of needs goes like this. That at the base level, you have a physiological needs, that is basically roti, kapda, makan, that is home, shelter, uh, food, clothes, you know, those are the kind of things that are required. This is what the, when I was in my school and college, this is the kind of movies that were coming in the theatres. Okay, the movies were based on all basics of life. And uh, basically, goal-based planning started with this, you know, that I have to have a house, I have to have a car, I need to have a, uh, I, need, I need my children to get educated, I need my daughter to get married. These were the goals. 
that were part of our society okay in the past but as we are moving towards a more educated society where girls and boys are being both being educated girls are having their own finding their own footing and uh, i don't think marriages are any more uh, as uh, challenging as they, they used to be and a car also is easily affordable today in your emi especially if you are willing to drive a car which is not very fancy Uh, so as you move on in life you you move to different spaces and let's let's look at it goal based financial planning is accumulation now problem is in 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 our normal lives you no know, we invest too much of our life in accumulating so you need to know how much you need to accumulate because if you are accumulating too much either it's your next generation that might enjoy or the government might get that money back okay so we need to accumulate but we need to know how much to accumulate and how much to spend so when you talk to a financial advisor it is not about accumulating it is also about how much can i spend what is the power of my money can i do this can i do that can i buy this can i go for a holiday here so that ability to know how much is the power of your money is very 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 important just a second oh yeah so so i told you what physiological needs are so basically the first s okay is stuff that means what i will get there are four s i will discuss with you the first s is stuff what i can get and unfortunately most of us also get stuck to this stuff we can't go over go, go beyond from, even after we have stuff we want more stuff okay that is why we don't understand that we have enough okay second is uh, in the hierarchy the next level is you know love and belonging a family children you know and you need a secured society some amount of cash flow is there some amount of freedom is there this is what happens at the second level and uh, this is a love and belonging is, is yes you are accumulating money but you are also enjoying the money and this is where you start experiencing security so stuff is the first thing second is secure security and as you move on you move, you reach a level of one upmanship okay now you already have what you need you are secure your stuff is there now you want to differentiate yourself and this is where instead of buying a toyota car you want to buy a bmw you want to buy a mercedes and so on and this is a space which is about i me and myself and Uh, it's a bit about narcissism and this is a space where you can get stuck in your life and this is a very dangerous space because even if you reach this space at 40 45 sometimes uh, the self love is so much that it can take you all the way throughout your life and all you do in life is trying to be better than the others and that's in a way a wasted life okay so this is again a phase we have to pass and we need to have to deal with it so this is about self esteem and i call that status so you have we started with stuff then we went to secure and now this is status this is the third level okay and many people get stuck in this level they don't go beyond this okay and then they spend a life which has lot of wealth and money but no happiness because on status front you can never be the best you'll always be trying to achieve something which you don't have and the last level is when you have enough money and that is what i say it's very important that you know that you have enough like today in my life i know i have enough i have a cash flow i know that if my health is all right i will live through this period of my life okay so i'm in a position to spend time to do something for others without having any, without expecting anything immediately if i get i am is always welcome okay but uh, just a second so 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 what happens is at this stage when you reach when you know that you have enough money you are in a position to do many things and when you this is where legacy gets created and when a legacy gets created many times it appears that you know we are giving something and it is a thankless thing but it's not like that moment you are in this self actualization phase when you know that you have enough money you actually land up creating stuff which is a legacy which stays forever and actually it gives you a lot in return so whatever goes comes around that's again a very famous quote whatever goes comes around 
but many people don't reach this level of the life if, even if they have the capacity to reach this level so there are a lot of people who have the capacity to reach this level but they still do not reach this level in life because they don't know that they have the, they have enough they are still in the status level some of them are still in the stuff level so these are things you you have to keep in mind and uh, when you look thing of money so self actualization is nothing but servant leaders you are lead you are a leader but you are serving you are serving the people so this is called service so there are four s as i said stuff secure status and service okay so service is a point when you already know that you have enough money you have enough of a corpus your cash flow is so strong like i said the doctor who has who's earning 3 lakhs a month but has 5 crores with him that 5 crores is enough for the doctor to live throughout his life never having to worry about money whether he earns 3 lakhs or 2 lakhs thereafter doesn't matter because you are completely performing something else by then so understanding enough is very important Uh, cost and revenue decoupling is extremely important to understand. Okay, and this is extremely important. I'll show you the chart. See, if you look at this, there is a purple line which is money. Uh, there is a greenish line which is uh, cost. And uh, like we had this, uh, we have, we have we have, during COVID we had the curve that flattened. Okay, so your cost actually works like that. beyond you initially when you don't have money money is extremely important and because it buys you the basics of life but a point comes you know in 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 life that you can't spend beyond a particular amount every month then you then what happens is the only thing you have to, you can go and throw money you can buy a shirt of 1 lakh rupees you know all those kind of things you can certainly do because there are there is a market for that also but if for most people cost starts petering out it starts flattening okay the 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 purple money is the money that you earn by your efforts by sweating sweating it out sweating it out so you need to run faster you need to run faster to make more money and the wealth that you see the the pink line that is the wealth that you can which you create you accumulate and you allow it to serve you now that wealth is uh, undergoes power of compounding so that wealth regenerates itself so much that it it really creates em- enough and more for you and it gives you supply for your entire life you can withdraw money from that kind of a corpus and there is a rule uh, of 4% so if you have 100 rupees with you you can if you withdraw 4 rupees every year okay if you withdraw 4 rupees every year the 100 rupees the basic amount will never get depleted it will always be there So the hundred can be thousand, can be ten thousand, can be one lakh, ten lakhs, one crore, ten crores. So basically, four percent a year is available to you to spend. Okay, most people don't understand. And again, what is happening in India is during my parents' time or my grandparents' time, the basics of life people could achieve only when they turned fifty-five, sixty, and they lived for maybe a ten more years after that. today what is happening most of the young uh, people in india the new india uh, where the you know where the middle class is moving towards upper middle class the lower class is moving towards middle class this is the this is one of those phases not only of india but of the world where we are actually the luckiest people living in this part of the world the least amount of conflict is happening these days although we are now seeing so much of conflict happening around us because of the news flow but generally this is one of the best parts of history where people are having abundance so there is wealth available to people there is money available to people but if you spend your entire life on money on running hard you only go to focus on status and you can't do service but if you understand that you can create wealth which can be more than the income that you earn per month the day you reach where you like for example today my passive income is more than my active income okay i am not so bothered about my active income whatever comes i treat it as bonus okay but today most doctors their practice is their active income okay so at gradually you have to make the wealth as your active income that should give you the money that you need and what is your active income your practice should become like a bonus whatever i do then you can move to service 
because finally you have the money and at the end of the day you should know what is the money story so understanding the three curves i told you so i don't need to i just read it because i have explained it to you money is active money and grows additionally wealth is passive money and grows exponentially and the cost curve ultimately has to flatten we need to understand the factors that can compound the wealth curve faster we need to understand that time freedom is the ultimate wealth so when you say i don't have time i think that express that expresses poverty okay you can say i you are not important for me and i don't have time for you that's fine you are not a priority for me but if a person genuinely doesn't have time for his family for his his genuine needs then certainly that person is not really rich so again this is the same expression the cost curve is flattens the revenue goes up okay and this is happening very early in life now by the time you are 45 you actually have enough time to do things that you wish to do and this is a concept called financial freedom and also this is a very popular uh, uh, word in in the uh, called fire f i r e it's not uh, fire the literal meaning of fire it is called financial independence retire early and this is a very big movement in the us also so all you need to do is go to google and type fire and you'll realize what is what not is happening around this concept so this is what the this is how you need to understand what is enough what is your money story and you should reorient your life around these things and it doesn't take a lot of uh, effort. i mean it doesn't take too much to realize that you have enough so basically the current generation reaches financial freedom much earlier hence they should not miss the opportunity to live a purposeful life earlier what was happening if you see earlier a person would the end as i said our parents and grandparents the lifespan of the, this is life life span of the new generation this is the life span of the old generation by the time they reached their esteem level that means they had a car they had a driver they had a house and they were kind of happy they were almost ending their lives at esteem level today you get this very fast in life this this happens even at the age of 40 okay by 40 you reach here so you have enough and more time to do to live a life which is less boring because status cannot give you uh, happiness forever stuff cannot give you happiness forever there's only something that gives you happiness forever and can keep and you create a legacy and you can sustain it is when you do get into service okay so as i said this uh, presentation may sound a bit uh, philosophical but it is not purely philosophical there is a lot of science also behind this so basically abundance is more money but the same life span so what is happening is you are having more wealth more money but we are not a life span is not increasing so there's no point accumulating so you keep accumulating money it doesn't mean they're going to live for 200 years okay finally most people will pass away around 70 to 80 85 90 that's that's just, that is the period in which people will die but now they have a lot of money so what is happening many a time is people are dying rich but they're living very poor so during their lifetime they are only saving 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 and accumulating but suddenly one day they go now it's very important to know when it is enough and when you can start spending and living a purposeful life so it's extremely important to know whether 5 crores is enough 3 crores is enough or 15 crores if you are thinking 15 crores is enough you will be running throughout your life trying to make 15 crores if you know that 3 to 5 crores is enough you will chase that 3 to 5 crores and then change your gears you will try to live a life which is happiness Uh, purposeful and uh, service oriented so what are our challenges so basically if you look at our challenges we live a very messy life which which means that these are three factors of life your health needs to be good you need to have money your wealth needs to be good and you need to have time so if i had money if i have good health and i have a lot of time i think that is happiness so the time i can do anything i want i'm having a good health i'm feeling good and i have money i can spend what i want to now what happens in a, a normal person's life so during our youth we have time and we have health so small children they have the time uh, or the teenagers they have good health but they don't have money so often i think you know when we were small 
uh, we wanted to eat a Cadbury chocolate, but uh, we had no money with us at that time or to buy food, uh, chocolates, international chocolates. Today, we have uh, all the money to buy chocolate, but then we have diabetes. We can't have it. So once you reach the middle age, what happens is money starts coming in. Okay, health is still okay in the middle age, but your time is not there. That's when people say, I have no time. I have no time because you are always running after money because you, you don't know what's enough. So you run after money. And uh, as you grow old, you actually uh, have the time again. And um, money also you may have made in your life, but your health starts deteriorating. So how do you, through money management, how do you sort uh, these problems? So uh, for children, I would say money management, provide children with good experiences. So you need to be mindful that if you are well off, you're having good amount of money, your children are young, they have time, they have good health. So you can provide them, uh, of course, value systems are very important, so you don't provide them the wrong thing. But at the same time, if they need to get some experience, supposing they need to go abroad, they need to experience life abroad, they want to go to NASA, they want to learn something, it could be expensive. But I think if you understand money management, you will feel confident to spend that money without being very mindful that that won't affect your uh, wealth in the long term. It's well within the 4%. Then attain financial freedom by the time they are 40. It's very important now that when you attain freedom at 60, you are actually not having the uh, health. But if you can attain financial freedom at the age of 40, that after 40, you can do what you wish to do. At that point in time, you already have reasonable health. You already have uh, reasonable wealth. What you don't have is time. So this freedom will give you time. So third is invest in health during your middle age. So as I said, when you turn old, your health starts deteriorating. But when you are in 40s, when you're in 50s, you're going to invest on in your health. I mean, you have uh, trainers, you can go, you, you need to go to the gym, you need to do yoga, you need to, if required, have a, um, have a coach, have a mentor, have a yoga, sir. Even if it is expensive, even if it's private, do that because you know that this is going to help you because there is abundance. The worst thing is turn 60, 65 and you don't have, uh, you, you don't have health. I mean, that is going to be very sad if you have a lot of wealth and you don't have health. What are you going to do with it? Okay, so when you are in your 30s and 40s, invest in your health. Even earlier, you can invest in your health so that when you are 40 to 50, 60, you are healthy. Second is try to get free of money tensions early so that you have that time. And as when, you are, when you are small, as parents, you can provide good experiences to your children uh, I'm not saying spoil them, provide good experience to them. So these are things that you can be mindful of. So challenge number two is messy relationships. So money management can foster and deepen good relationships. So many a times, in fact, I have spent a lot of time in creating some calculators that can actually change society because people don't understand how powerful the power of compounding is. We always look at power of compounding from the accumulation point of view. We never look at power of compounding from the extraction point of view. When you are extracting 4% and less money, the balance is compounding at such a fast pace that that 4% is not disrupting it at all. So for example, if you the best gift a parent can give the children is instead of blowing up money on a wedding okay, and, and splurging money, take a reasonable amount of money and gift it to the couple. Say, for example, you give 50 lakhs of rupees to the couple. You won't believe you are actually gifting the couple financial freedom for the rest of their lives. Okay, that is the power of even 50 lakhs of rupees. Okay, so this is the kind of gift you give your children. It's a gift you, they will remember forever. And of course, with the guidance and somebody to help them. Then this is Ghar Ghar Ki Kahani. Many a time, this is a very typical problem in Indian societies. Parents who are 50s and 60s have enough and more money. Their children could, could be facing challenges. They may not be settled. Okay, now what happens is parents then tend to believe that whatever I have ultimately goes to my children. But people don't realize that that point in time may be 20 years hence. So the parent is now 60 or 55. By the time he passes away and gives the money to the children, the parent could be around 80 years old and the children could be around 60 or around 55, which means that by the time they get the money, either they have solved their problems and they have enough money 
or it is not relevant to them. Now, over here, these are problems. If you understand money management, one can counsel the parents and say that even if you give your children, let's say 50,000 rupees a month, it is not going to impact your wealth at all. So this is how we can use money management to resolve a lot of problems of life. Then this is called power of KTB means power of kicking the boss. Many times we uh, we work in companies where we are very unhappy. We are just not feeling comfortable. We don't like the way people behave with us. But we work because we feel that what do I do if I, if I'm, if I lose my job? How do I manage my expenses? Okay, again, one can, if you understand the power of money, the power of compounding, one can just have a small discussion to realize that if you are having two to three crores with you, if you can, you can put that amount together, you actually can get rid of all your troubles and just start your life the way you want to start. And because when you work in a stressful environment, it actually causes not only pay, uh, wealth related problems if you're not earning well, but it also creates health related problems which actually hurt you more in the future. So you are actually sacrificing your future for the present, which is very unfortunate. So when you know uh, how to manage money, these are the kind of problems in families that you can solve. So messy relationships can become, you can foster quality relationship by just having this knowledge of money management. Making people better professionals and eradicating corruption. So a lot of time we see people indulge in corrupt practices just to make some more money. If you know the power of enough, you don't need to do this. Because when you do the wrong things, it catches up. And when it catches up, you pay a very big price. So this happens to everyone in every profession. So we can become better professionals if we know what is enough. And if you, if you, if you have clarity of that enough, you can go around and a, a point you have to live a life you need to get some 10, 15 years of your life where you can actually serve people. And that's going to create legacies. So second is balancing lifestyle and wealth creation. So many times what happens is you actually earn an increment. Okay, so let's say you got a 15% increment. There are two kinds of people. One kind of people will take this 15% increment and accumulate. Okay, because they need to make more money. One kind of people will take the 15% and blow it away by increasing their lifestyle. Now, the knowledge of money management helps you understand the ratios. So what is the amount that you can actually use to enhance the quality of your life? And what is the amount that you need to actually go back and invest? So these are all problems of day-to-day -day life which can be resolved through the knowledge of money management. So money management can foster and deepen relationships. So basically, it helps you to live a purpose-based life. So from stuff to cash flow. So what we, what most people talk about is accumulation. What I normally talk about is cash flow. Understand the power of your money so that you can utilize the money to have a better quality life. Okay, at the same time, without compromising the wealth that you need to make. There is no point in creating so much of wealth that it becomes meaningless. It is, enough, it is important to know that you need to create wealth for your future. But at the same time, you need to know what is the power of my wealth, what kind of cash flows it can generate. So when I look at money versus wealth, both sound very similar, but they are not really similar. Money management helps to generate wealth. And wealth is a regenerating thing. Power of compounding creates more and more money. That's called compounding. Again, the same thing that I've already explained to you. So money versus wealth. It is not money that you make. It is the money that you keep. I said this right in the beginning. So I also gave you this example. Rupees 3 crore is more valuable than 8 lakh per month of income. So if you have 3 to 4 crores, you are actually a much stronger person as far as wealth is concerned than if you are earning 8 lakhs per month and you don't know because that you never know that this is going to sustain itself. But I can assure you that 3 crore will sustain itself. 3 crore will become 10 crores. It will become 15 crores. And as it grows, you are pulling out less money. Your cost is not increasing. And more and more compounds. So you create a lot of wealth when you start, when you initially accumulate a corpus. 
and if you can no, and if you can afford to keep that corpus untouched for decent amount of time a time will come that corpus becomes so large that you can withdraw your entire lifestyle for the rest of your life so that is wealth 8 lakhs per month per, per month of income is money 3 crores money kept with you is wealth because wealth regenerates itself so there are three zones of wealth one crore to four crores is independent zone where you can you can start getting independent and you can live a reasonably good life four crore to six crore you can live a life that you wish to live the dream life and above six crore actually you can become a change maker you can actually go and also donate money you can become you you can actually contribute money towards causes why wealth is so important because wealth regenerates the 4% magic use wealth to foster and deepen relationships and meaning so what is the path to wealth the 3m money strategy make money is the first one manage money is the second one and third is to multiply money so now i have come to the part where i am teaching you how you can create wealth i started with a very unexpected beginning saying that you have enough okay then don't uh, worry too much we are living in a very abundant society okay but at the same time we have to make wealth we have to create that wealth so this is the path to wealth how do you start it off obviously the first part of making uh, wealth is learn be a lifelong student be relevant all the time okay so the days are over that you could study and then work for the rest of your life without having to study again these things are changing uh, you need to build skills you need to be valuable you need to work hard i think one of the most important point is the fourth point the first 10 15 years of life is live frugally create the wealth that is going to be your uh, money generator okay so you need to create that corpus that will help you with cash flows forever so if you spend less now and you you do a lot of investing in the first 10 to 15 years of your life you just require 10 to 15 years and you will have that corpus of course if you are if you get gifts from your parents or from elsewhere then obviously it becomes easier you can reach that level faster you don't need to live that frugally in that case save invest and allow money to compound this is this is a time where you actually work hard make money practice create wealth okay do everything possible to create money okay this could be a period of 10 years 15 years okay but at the same time have a corpus that is going to generate cash flows for you then comes the second part manage money which is lifeline budgeting so when i say know your pv pv is present value so i asked you the question how much money do you think you require so people said 3 crores 5 crores now the question you need to ask yourself what is my present value do i have 3 crores do i have 5 crore do i have 1 crore do i have 50 lakhs so you need to work that out you need to build your pv okay knowing this being mindful of this is very important understand the wealth of simplicity so as i said if you can live a simple life you will understand that it itself adds a lot of wealth to your corpus determine your desired lifestyle so you need to figure out what is the kind of lifestyle you want to live okay if it is simple good even if it is not it is it is little uh, higher on comfort and luxury so be it it doesn't matter because as long as you know your pv you can do that also and i said a point will come it will flatten it, you cannot go beyond a point evaluate your financial independence very important for all of you over here to sit back and understand whether you are financially independent already are you already having enough and i am very sure some of you maybe 50 to 60% of you will realize that you are already free okay so you should relax and if not course correct your investment strategy so if you are young and you have 10 to 15 years target you need not invest only in uh, places which will give you 7% 8% returns you should invest in places which can give you 15% returns albeit with some amount of uh, volatility The risk in our business doesn't mean you lose your money risk means you temporarily you can lose your money it's a notional loss as long as you don't exit when you lose that money and you stay invested you recover it back so we call that risk so 
again how do you manage your money know your present value how much you have understand the wealth of simplicity determine the desired lifestyle you want to live evaluate whether you are already financially free and then course correct your investment strategy if required if you feel that you have some distance to go look at how you can restructure your portfolio then multiply money is create two accounts now what do you do when you are already having 8 crores 9 crores 10 crores okay you have one account that, that is a protection account so manage your life account conservatively don't need to put your money in uh, volatile uh, instruments manage your wealth account very aggressively so you maybe if i have let's say for the sake of argument i have 10 crores with me i can earmark 8 crore to give me a comfortable life i can park that money invest that money in an instrument that gives me less volatility but gives me 10 to 12% but the but the 2 crores that i have it is my wealth component. This I can invest in places which can give me 15 to 20% return This with some volatility. I am So this is my wealth account because this 2 crores can become a very big sum if I am investing it in this kind of a place. And that wealth account of mine, can I, I can use it for all the services that I want to do. If I want to uh, get into some kind of a donation, I want to start a foundation, I want to help people, that can be from my wealth part of it. Because that will grow very fast if you manage it in an aggressive way. Deploy wealth to create high valuation legacy. So that wealth that you are going to create over time can be used to create legacies, can be used to serve people. It can be used to start a foundation. It can be used to do charity. Okay. And this you can also do, especially this fifth point is just one line, but it's very important for doctors. Okay, one has to move from skills to scale. Being a practicing doctor is not uh, a great strategy if you take it all the way till you are 70 years old. At some stage, you need to move from skills to scale. And this is what is being taught a lot these days across various platforms. Okay, how do you treat your practice like a business? How do you scale up your business? How do you create wealth? Okay, the most skillful person also will not be able to create too much of wealth. He'll create a lot of money. But if you are able to collaborate, work together, work towards a common goal, figure out the team that is required, all those things can help you scale up and that creates valuation and a lot of wealth. So skill to scale, if you were to look at is vision-based approach. The idea is to serve more. So as a doctor, if you can treat 100 people, it's definitely a great thing. But if you have the ability to, to be able to help the lives of a lakh people, 10,000 people, that is even better. So the whole idea, if you are choosing a vision-based approach, means you have to serve more people. Okay, it is, how do you create a skill to scale? You have to build a culture, you have to attract uh, people who are like-minded people together. You have to build systems, you have to build a brand. Okay, focus on people who focus on customers, create create better doctors under you, train doctors, share your knowledge, share your secrets, create a great power uh, system, become uh, a teacher, a mentor, a trainer, a coach, create leaders, build a management team, step back and build a legacy. I'm living right now, as I told you, uh, in Rishikesh, I live in a property which is called Aloha. The, the the owner doesn't stay anywhere close by. He stays in a different city, far away. He has multiple properties over here. He has management teams that are looking after it. And believe it, the service that we get and the quality that we're experiencing is awesome. The owner is nowhere nearby. He's not supervising, but he has people who are doing it. So this, this is how he has scaled up. And there's a lot of lessons for doctors to pick up from here. So basically, this is how you create a system. It, you need to have a purpose. You need to have a proper culture, attracting the right kind of people. You need to have systems and technology and a team. So hierarchy of income is uh, what we need to understand over here when we start to work. Okay, we earn a salary. Okay, that is a very basic wealth. The lowest level of wealth is salary. Okay, because it's very selfish. I go, I work for my own for myself. Okay, that's all I do. I, I sell my time, I earn money. When it comes to practice wealth, okay, like what you are doing, you've got independence, you are practicing, 
you can get up at you can, you can decide your life the way you want to decide and you are also having a few people around you compounder etc you have a you take you have your own clinic so you are also looking after the society to some extent your compounder is getting a salary you are giving a rent to somebody who's given you a place so you are growing the system and that is why when you are in business you know the tax guys also give you some more freedom that you can take this as a cost you can take that as a cost because you are serving then you move to a business wealth that is when perhaps you start a small polyclinic or something and you are hiring people and you are earning wealth but this is business wealth and you get more concessions from the government because you are doing a lot for this economy and then if you do this consistently what you create is a brand and when you create a brand you can expand so if i have a hospital a polyclinic a small hospital and it's very popular okay and let's say i call it abc hospital now if the brand abc becomes famous i can give a i can actually license the brand to other people who are willing to follow my systems my processes i can give them the label okay and i earn from that also and finally when i am creating this kind of a brand and like i told you uh, if the owner or the person the main, most skillful person if he, he is not required any longer that's when the world values that system a lot because no the world when you talk about valuation these days valuation means what the others value you and nobody will value a system if the creator is needed to be in that system the people will value your system if the creator is no longer required so that's the way you create valuation wealth when you create this kind of valuation wealth at that stage you actually move to you can do purposeful work you can do serve the society you and you create further self actualization wealth so this is just like the pyramid this is the different kinds of wealth that you create in your life so basically what is valuation valuation is nothing but p into m into v which means people into money into value so if you're creating something of high value okay and there is money you're creating along if you're serving you're providing value to people you get a lot of money and if you are able to do it with you not being involved with your people being involved with your less involvement or at some stage zero involvement that's when you create serious value and this is a progress of life it's not going to happen on day one it's not going to happen to people who are 30 but you need to have clarity that which is the direction i want to move in so 1 into 1000 is equal to 1000 into 1 technically okay mathematically scientifically it is true but honestly 1 into 1000 is not 1000 into 1 because here one guy is doing 1000 people's work he's doing 1000 shows here 1000 people are doing one thing so this is called compounding the lower part so the upper part is more of selling skills my own efforts hard work this is creating a system valuation is a system of sustainability means if i am not required and my system works and it is valuable which means that if i am not there tomorrow the system will work and that is the that is the space we need to go this is called legacy legacy means without you also the system will work and that is called that is very high valuable system the world values such system and this is where maximum wealth gets created so which is again nothing other than your legacy as i said it's legacy so your legacy will ensure that you live forever now i'm ending my presentation here uh it legacy will ensure that you live forever legacy will ensure that you bring meaning to your life so either we we have two choices in life either we keep manufacturing wants not needs just wants that is stuff okay either we do this or we live a life of selfies and status keep buying better cars keep showing off one one upmanship spend our entire life on this or create a legacy the choice is ours in the journey of life and this you can do and when you do this you actually build a nation so you create legacy by building a nation by growing your reputation becoming valuable in the eyes of people and raising your worth and self worth so that you live wealthy and never die i rest my case thank you so much for the uh, for your time i am i can take questions right now thank you 
Thank you very much, sir. It was really very comprehensive and actually to the point. Uh, might be uh, very much uh, creating awareness to most of our members because as a doctor, we tend to run after uh, our patients, after our money and probably not giving enough time to our families. The story must be same everywhere that our families are, don't get our time, our kids don't get time. And probably work-life balance has to be created. And you spoke very well on that point. I'm really impressed with uh, the presentation, sir. Thank you very much. And we and, can take and, questions. And the problem is uh, we don't give time to our families. And the bigger problem is we start believing that that's the only way of life. That's yeah, where yeah. the problem is. Yes. That at some stage, none of us can give enough time to our families. We all go through that. But the pro problem is we start believing that that's the only way. And then yes. we live life till the end of our life. And that's where the problem is. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely true. So we can take questions. If you have questions, please uh, write it down or probably you can speak also. If uh, we can mute the mic. May I? You can raise. May I? Yeah. May I? So and my question to you is that what age did you become financially independent that you are having your passive uh, flow of income? Uh, well, I got uh, financially free. See, honestly speaking, I left my job when I was uh, around 45, 46 years of age. I'm 55 now. So around 10 years back. And honestly, I was not financially really. I mean, you can say that I had that one and a half crores with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So, but, so that is not like uh, really free. But um, as I said, you know, that uh, a time came, I just couldn't work. I didn't like my work any longer. And I had right. to leave. And uh, fortunately, I got my wife was earning something. She gave me support. I left my job. I am teaching you all these things because I perhaps was not lucky enough to be in that situation. Yeah. So when I did the jump, I was actually taking a big risk and I had to. And let me be very candid and uh, honest with all of you. I spent almost five to seven years of my life training. So what I was doing was I was traveling across the country. Okay. And I was getting a very big, uh, I would say, endorphin or cake. Because I was I was building my personal name. Okay, so I would travel every month, 15, 20 days across the country training. So that is practice. That is, that is nothing but practice. And I was getting happiness that I'm building my own name. That was my ego. Okay, mm -hmm. and I did that for almost five to seven years of my, right. of my initial days. Today, when I think about it, I realize what a big foolish uh, mistake was that. Somewhere right. in between, I, I met my partner. He... I, we, we started a new program with him. And when I studied that program, we were launching that program. But when I studied that program, I realized my mistake. And thereafter, I stopped training. So I don't do training now. I just do such talks. We have trainers who do training. Okay, so I don't do training. I'm do, I don't want that importance or anything. I realized I need to create a legacy. So you are asking me, uh, I, when I left, I had some money. But fortunately, I, I I was able to create that freedom income by the time I was 50, 50, 51. And I realized yeah. more about it as I grew a bit older also. So, But today I am very comfortable that I can afford to serve the society and my lifestyle won't change. I can still come on a holiday as many okay. times as I want. Right. So I've been uh, doing this investment and using the power of compounding for past uh, six, seven years. And uh, I understand your, uh, you know, to talk very well that I thinking the thoughts, right? So, but when I want to share with other people, the most important question I face with others is, what life me karna ke? Like, what else to do? You know, that is the biggest challenge which everyone faces because being doctors, we are so used to working since our inception days of MBBS that if like COVID, like a lot of doctors were feeling like. We, we are we don't know what to do with our life though we are living in our dream house with our dream family you know with the most loved ones but we were going crazy in that dream house with our loved ones right and the biggest challenge or people ask is like Fir karenge kya? clinic nahi jayenge, patient nahi dekhenge, to karenge kya? because they've not done that since so many years all we know as a doctor is seeing patients so what did you do uh, when you I, like, I, I, that's a very good question you've asked me. So, karege kya is uh, is where you need to understand the desire to serve. Okay, and it's when when we say serve, when we say charity, it looks like you know we're talking something which is not uh, which is just for the sake of talking. 
Okay, right. but but imagine if you can serve and you don't lose anything. If I can serve and I can still come on a holiday every month and I can I can still blow up money and I'm still serving. So that is when I'm saying serving can be made a little more hip rather than you know appearing too philosophical. So right. today what we are doing, we realize that this business of money management, what we are doing is a compounding business. Okay, and uh, people who are managing people's money, it's a very good profession. Okay, it's a good business. And a lot of people today we feel who are in corporate and who are at some stage in their lives are not happy. They're not happy in their jobs. They, they are not happy with their purpose. Uh, and there are a lot of people like that. And uh, so what we are trying to do right now is we all re we've realized that if this country has to improve, people have to manage their money. To help people manage their money, they need somebody to guide them. Okay, so we are trying to reach out to people who are not money managers, who are doing other professions, and we are trying to teach them how to manage money so that we give them a profession, we give, give them an alternate source of income so that their quality of life improves. So we are investing a lot of money in creating a field force like that. And someday they will they will start. So that, that is a joy. So this kind of a job, because you have team, you have to soldiers, it will will keep going on and on. So... As a doctor, you can do many things like that. You can create, uh, you have a younger younger set of doctors who are still, who require more skill. They don't have that skill. You can make doctors, you can create doctors. Probably redefine the purpose of life. And I don't think MBBS and post-graduation creates doctors. Doctors get created after MBBS and post-graduation. So those, those years, that 20 years that you spend, that is where you really become doctors. So you can help another doctor get 20 years of experience in 10 years of time. So that can be done. Thank you. One of the important points that you touched uh, today, sir, is about the health. The triangle that you showed about health, wealth, and time. So we have spoken about time, but one neglected point uh, among us doctors is about our health. And they say doctors are the worst patient. We never take care of our health. So how many people believe that you are really taking care of your health? Uh, I can say I am taking care because I am a jogger, I am a runner and I go for almost three to four days a week for a run. But how many people are doing that? I would like to know from Same our here. Same here. Nice, nice. Man. About it. Yeah. So you need to have time for that. So you need to have the sense of comfort. So we started with 15... 15, I, the person who put 15 crores genuinely believes 15 crores are required. The person who put 3 to 4, but the real answer is that only 3 to 4 crores. So if you are chasing 15 crores and you 3 to 4 crores is what you need, that means that jogging, the relaxing is all going. You are you're you're not, you're not doing that. So when you have that extra hours, you are trying to do something to earn rather than uh, spending time on your own health. And uh, creating a legacy, very well uh, spoken point, sir. I, I, I would little add on that, that probably uh, we are blessed here in Surat that we have a, a sort of co-practice, uh, same uh, specialty consultant come together so that the other consultants can take a break, can go on a holiday and other members can take care of the patients. That is where some, I, I believe that we doctors are really scared about our practice that Mera patient ye leke jayega and the other the doctor next door yes, will take care of the patient. This is very, the insecurity is there. I, I understand this very well, doctor, because as I told you, I spent eight years as a trainer, sole, sole trainer, number one. Uh, I felt that somebody, I should not share this with somebody and I'm being very candid. Second thing, as a practitioner of money management also, many times we are scared to introduce our client to somebody else. Okay, thinking, but I feel that, though, you know, in business, there is something called bad debt. Okay, so if you really want to compound, some amount of leakage will happen. Okay, mm -hmm. but sometimes in the, to save that leakage, we don't compound. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's part of life, you know, we have to take it. Uh, and uh, if you are associated with good people, very good people will not stab you in your back. Okay, okay. occasionally somebody might pinch you, but I think that's a bad debt. Leave it and move on. Do we have any more questions or any comments or anything you want to know from sir? Very well, uh, uh, I, I would say that this was really very nice lecture. Actually, I would tell that apart from finance, so many aspects you have touched that we knew about all this, but probably nobody has touched us in the way you have touched us today. 
that would be uh, one of the highlights of the today's talk. Uh, so any more Thank questions that we have? Four years back, uh, I was hearing the uh, talk of Dharam sir. I became a disciple of him. Uh, I know that two crore is more than enough. I wondered and uh, I started a uh, journey with him for the past four years I am with him. And he impressed me a lot and enough abundant peace of mind to all people so that uh, I am on a mission to educate, inspire, empower one lakh doctors to achieve their financial freedom. So this mission state, uh, statement will make all the doctors what to do, Madam Ask asked. Because if you have got enough, then you can do go for servicing the society. What service or what can I give back to the doctor society is empower them to achieve their financial freedom. If they taste that financial freedom, they are not working for money. Their money is working for them. So the entire society will get benefited because of that. So that mission statement uh, was given by Dharam Shah and that vision he has given me is amazing. And I thank uh, Dharam Shah for giving me that vision and mission. And it makes me happy that I'm giving um, uh, back to the society. So Absolutely. I'm no more... Absolutely, sir. And uh, I will tell you, uh, if you look at uh, money management, the, uh, the the frugal you are, the, the simpler life you live, the faster you become free. And if you look at the poor, the middle class, the lower middle class today, the lower middle class spent only 20,000 rupees a month for the living or sometimes even less than 20,000. And they have actually multiple people earning uh, uh, from their families. So they are having an income of, let's say, 40,000 rupees and they're spending 20,000 rupees. You know, nobody, it is very difficult to educate because they are all, they are scared about this money management. But if a person from this particular class were to do 10,000 rupees SIP, okay, 10 or 12,000 rupees SIP every month for 10 to 15 years. So a 40 year old lady doing SIP till she's 55, that gives her freedom. She never has to work for money again for the rest of her life. It is so, and they get it fast because their cost of living is low, but nobody is doing this. Nobody is doing this. is called serving the society. We need yes. to do it. Absolutely, sir. I, I would like to make a point here, uh, sir. Uh, what we can do as most of our, our clinicians and having our own private practice, I made it a point. Uh, it's not about glorifying ourselves, but I made it a point that probably I, I would not tell them and I would be giving them bonus, but that bonus would be going to a mutual fund or an index fund. And I tell them after a year or so and tell them that I have started this now please continue it. So uh, after two, three years, they would realize the real benefit they have got it. Some are there people who would stop it and withdraw the money, but there would be around 20, 30% who will still continue and thank you later on. A brilliant idea. In fact, one of my employees, uh, he's earning 36, 37,000, 36,000 rupees now, nearly 40,000. But I have his, he stopped his SIP. Okay, so I was talking to my wife today. I said, now tell him very clearly, I'm not going to give him any increment now. I will only put money in his SIP. And if he, if he, if he removes the money from SIP, I'll not give him future money there also. Because unfortunately, this is like, you know, walking every day, exercising every day. It has to be a habit. So if it is not a habit, and we don't, and we don't realize that the, the damage we are doing to our future. Yeah. And sir, one more thing. Um, uh, this has happened to one of our employees that if you are not advising them, somebody else will advise. And the famous fund, um, I, will, I cannot take the Lucknow based chit fund, which collapsed and took the poorest of poor with them. So she had put 38,000 rupees in that and lost all the money. Still, there we are fighting in Supreme Court. It, uh, this, this, I was trying to teach somebody over here in this Sashi case, one lady. Why don't you do SIP? You won't believe they are so scared. They are so scared. They think that, you know, I have come to now rip them apart. Okay, so I can see fear. So it is so scary, you know, for them. We want to help them, but they are not uh, trusting us. And they're not trusting somebody. And the richer the people, they, they are the ones who actually do the looting. So, you know, even if we come from a better society, drive better car, they feel these are the people behind so they are not trusting us at all. So how to educate the poor people? Very big requirement. So as, as when it comes to service, you know, and I don't have to go and do the service. I can create a system. The system can serve. 
Okay, so it's not that you know service means you have to go to the grassroots level and spend time with everybody and teach. You can have you can create systems that can do it, but at least you need to have a vision that this can help the country. It can help people. If we are lucky, it'll and if the day we succeed 50, 60 percent, I think when you then you at the end of your life when you define what is the best part of your life, it will not be the course that you passed. It won't be the degree that you got. It won't be the money that you made. It will be this difference that you made. That will be what, what you will feel happy about and your legacy will feel happy about. Your children will feel happy about. And it's 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 a bit philosophical, but I think it comes to people once you cross 40, 45, 50. I think you realize this. It doesn't come to you at 30, 35. But it's good to be exposed to these kind of things. Nobody is saying don't live a good life. Nobody says don't go for your holidays. By doing everything, you can still do good work. Then why not do it? Without any sacrifice, you can do that. Hello. hello hello can i speak can yes, i speak yes. yeah, yeah please please yeah yeah uh, so excellent lecture sir we thoroughly enjoyed the talk just uh, have a doubt i'm 50 is it uh, too late <laughs> no no if uh, 50 is not late at all because uh, from what you said it uh, somewhere around 30 we should have started and no not at all not at all not have at all education at, at, at 50 you would have accumulated wealth you know or some way may, may not be in the most uh, efficient way but you would have still accumulated wealth okay so you you have to assess your wealth right now and uh, you need to uh, be mindful about the future so 50 is not uh, old at all for this yes, I, okay. I i started after that <laughs> okay that's not me to you thank you IMA Pune and IMA Kerala study have uh, done health of the doctors. Average lifespan of Indian doctors is 10 years less than of average lifespan of Indian average population. That shows doctors are not taking care of their health at all. At what cost they are doing their health? Just to make money or accumulate, accumulate, accumulate money, they end up losing their life. They spend a lot of time for the patients, but not on their health. That's why they die early. Uh, so uh, from this lecture, what the message that I took is we must take care of our health. Doctors, if they take care of their health and if they give money to professionals, if they don't have uh, the money management uh, techniques or they know, they don't know the strategies, then take care of the money managers' help. So taking care of health and money, the time will be ours. Time freedom will be... Uh, Time will be abundant. Like money abundant, we get time abundant also. Time freedom will be there. Sir, I... I was I was just wanting to say one more point. As I saw the go through all the classes, learn what we are taught or teaching. As such, you are doing a profession when you don't have time. I will only request you don't try to do money management yourself. Already you are caught up in your work. Okay, we are now doing a lecture to be free. Now imagine you start doing money management yourself. It is not as easy as you think it is. Okay, it's not at all as easy as you think it is. My only request is be, be educated. Be an educated customer. Don't become a master because as such, you have to create, a, you have to take care of your own practice. How to scale up your practice, you have to think. Okay, so you need to look for partners who can help you. And when you have somebody else who's guiding you, it's always a good thing. I'm sure as a doctor also, I may be wrong, but many times when you fall ill, you must be consulting another doctor. You may not be every time taking your own medicines. Okay, you, re you need that uh, external person also. And somebody who's an expert can always do a better job. Yes, you can. If you are unfortunate to get a wrong person, that's a different story. I'd, your whole objective is to get the right person. Okay, so you can look at recommendations. You can talk to multiple people, get the right person. But uh, my only request is learn this subject, understand it, be an educated customer. For being an educated customer, don't try to do this. It's a very, very, very difficult space to be in. It has taken me many years to understand money management. Okay. If anyone doesn't have a question, I've got a question that you said, like, say, for example, six crore is more than enough, right? Yes. To be, yeah. 
so in such a vast group with different age groups and different uh, you know goals in life say someone has one child two child uh, two children and someone wants to send their kids abroad for education so how did you come up with this kind of an approximate figure of 5 to 6 crore as a jan figure which suits everyone see uh, again if you are having with you 20 crores mm-hmm. you can go and buy a farmhouse and not worry about its appreciation okay now the point is how important it is to send your children abroad i, w- I was telling you about the a- a stuff service status and uh, sir uh, no stuff secure status and service mm-hmm. most of most of the going abroad is status लाइफ में कुछ करने को नहीं है तो बच्चों को तो फॉरेन भेजना है क्योंकि मेरे नेबर का बच्चा फॉरेन गया ओके टुडे द होल वर्ल्ड इज स्क्रीमिंग फ्रॉम द रूफ टॉप सेइंग दैट इंडिया इज द प्लेस टू बी इन एंड इफ यू गो अब्रॉड यू नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क ओवर दे गोइंग टू कम बैक ओवर हियर ओके बट स्टिल पीपल गो बिकॉज़ वी आर इन कॉट अप इन द स्टेटस ओके आई नो सो मेनी आई नो अ फ्रेंड हुज ऑल हिज फ्रेंड्स चिल्ड्रन हैव गॉन अब्रॉड एंड इट इज ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ पर्पस ऑफ हिज लाइफ टू एंश्योर बोथ हिज किड्स गो अब्रॉड Okay, so I came across this because I don't have the desire. I don't want to send my children abroad. I don't feel that we uh, that it is required to go abroad. I'm sure there are many doctors who have never gone abroad, and still you are a, a, a practice, good doctors. Uh, do you think there are the doctors abroad are better than the doctors in India in general? No, no, no. India oh, has yeah. huge medical tourism. <laughs> huge, yeah, yes. huge medical tourism in India. So. Uh, i think uh, you see if you have bigger dreams without your base strong so let's say you are having 1 crore or 2 crores with you and you send your children abroad for a course that will cost 1 crore means 50% of your wealth gone and this happens in many doctors lives yeah th- then you are actually uh, go- sp- going to spend the rest of your life running uh, hurting your health and compromising the quality of your life it's a recipe for disaster it's a recipe for disaster disaster So, uh, see, at six to seven crores of wealth, now you can even send your child abroad. Honestly, <laughs> at, at at three crores, you can't. Okay. Yeah, no. My question was general. That how will everyone buy this? That okay, if I have five six crore with different dreams and aims and objectives in life, everyone can have a decent life. Was my question. Five to six crores, man, you'll get all your dreams. Okay. Okay. But, uh, unless you have a dream just to throw money for the sake yeah, of money. Right. Otherwise, five to six crores will have all your dreams. It's right. called. It's, they we say one million dollar. That is about eight crores. It's called financial freedom. Okay, right. means anything you can do, anything. Okay, and four crores is financial independence. So you can you live mean, a good life. In you mentioned years. something about four percent. Could you please repeat that? Four percent is basically it's a simple uh, thumb rule that mm-hmm. of let's say I have uh, I have uh, uh, one crore with me. Mm-hmm. So one crore's four percent is how much? So it will be um, ten per will be four lakhs. So four lakhs per year, which is forty thousand rupees a month, thirty-five to forty thousand rupees a month. You can withdraw without hurting your one crore at all. Okay. But that one crore won't go away. It will stay with you forever. Because that's the your corpus and that's the cash flow, passive pa- cash flow. Basic is your one crore is growing. Let's say at ten percent. Okay, mm. you are right. withdrawing four percent. Okay, so you you are always going to be in the money. In the money, correct. Okay, so for in fact, if your money you are managing your money well, you can pull out up to six to seven percent. Right. Okay, but I am saying four percent is a basic ground load. If you are pulling out four percent, and today at one crore you are pulling out four uh, lakhs. Okay, at five crores you will pull out four into five. That is two uh, uh, twenty lakhs. 20. Now twenty lakhs you divide by ten is about two lakhs, about eight one point eight lakhs. So if you have five crores with you, you can live a lifestyle of one point eight lakhs. Right, and that can that is uh, including the inflation part as well. Yes, yes, we we call it real rate of return. It's inflation. See, in this basic calculation, it may not work. At you may not be able to live a two crore, but you will be able to live a lifestyle of one point four lakhs or one point five lakhs. Okay, little bit you have to adjust for inflation. Right. But uh, the point remains that two uh, lakhs is a good lifestyle, no? So at Sorry. five cro- at five crores, two lakhs. So if if I say instead of two lakhs, spend one and a half lakhs, okay, and I adjust your inflation, still that is good. That's correct. Yeah. Thanks. So if there are no more questions, I think we can call it a day.
thank you so much i would thank like you, to sir. thank you very much i would like to go uh, for that there is a question from somebody is this one crore which are uh, talking is liquid money yes 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 that is one last message let me give you uh, money has to be liquid don't 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 be relaxed about having four flats a piece of land and that is i am not talking about that at all if you have extra land extra please liquidate it okay don't keep it okay liquidate it if at all you want to own a house it should be the house you live in that should be the only house you own in fact i don't even own my house i live in i have i live on rent and it's not me alone there are many fund managers who are very very famous people in india they're living on rented homes in fact forget about them the owner of uh, uh, zeroda they live in rented homes tamats yeah tamats so they have it so uh, but i don't go to that extreme extreme it's very difficult but at least don't have a house beyond the house you stay Keep so where in. to park that money is the question in fd or nps not fd not nps do a portfolio talk to an expert can okay, identify the right person don't take the decision yourself it don't self medicate okay it's not costly neither is the industry expensive okay nor nor are advisors expensive okay they neither of them are expensive so use an advisor find the right person talk to people you'll get you'll get there are quite a few of them the good ones are there and uh, and trust somebody who you know maybe you'll get references work with those kind of people okay so no more questions thank you sir thank you very much really thank nice you. talk sir and um, we all meet again uh, for the next lecture as uh, dr santhil will be in touch with us for the next time so thank you again thank you very much thank you i am leaving thank you, thank you so much thank you,